I was recently playing around with the list builder in the 40k app when I stumbled across the realization that you can build a legal 2000 point world eaters list consisting of Angron and eight demon princes with the sneaky use of allies being employed to get around the whole rule of three. Sure, in any competitive setting, it would probably fare pretty poorly, but it would be fun to play. And that's when I remembered I already had an Angron, specifically a Demon Rus conversion that I'd built based on the alternate heresy of the Dornian heresy. And long story short, I'm going to be building eight Space Wolf themed Demon Princes. But to make things just a little bit more interesting, each of these eight Demon Princes will be based on a well-known Space Wolf character, with the first of these being Logan Grimnar himself. But first, let's hear about the sponsors of this video. Displate. Now, Displate posters aren't your regular card or paper posters. They are instead beautifully printed on metal. And the best thing about them, though, is just how easy they are to hang on your walls. They don't require any hammers or drilling and involve an incredibly quick and straightforward mounting system. You just stick and place. And because they're magnetic, you can swap them out with new posters in mere seconds. There are tons of designs to pick from too. I picked up a few game-related posters, but their range includes officially licensed posters from Star Wars, DC, Marvel, and a load more movies and video games. They're also available in a few sizes. I went for the medium size, but you can also pick up larger sizes like this Hawaii-themed one that I hung in my wife's office. But you can also choose from matte or gloss finishes and even have them framed to match your decor. So if you're looking to spruce up your walls, then check out my link for my own personal collection and to get some excellent discounts. Just remember to use code PETE at checkout. Before the end of September, you can get 29% off buying one displate, 35% off buying two to four displates, and a whopping 40% off if you buy five or more. But if you're watching this after September, don't worry, there are still some discounts to be had. You can get 20% off if you buy one or two, and 30% off if you buy three or more. And you can find a link to all that down in the description and in the comments below. So with that, let's get back to our Logan Grimnar Demon Prince. The basis of this conversion was naturally the Chaos Demon Prince. While I would have had to mix things up a bit to avoid repetition, I could worry about that later on down the line. For now, the parts were clipped away and cleaned up before building the torso and the upper legs. To hint back towards Logan's flying sled, I opted to build him as the flying variant of the Demon Prince. However, having the left foot mounted on a rock as the instructions suggested seemed to rob the model of any forward momentum. To resolve this, the clawed left foot's ankle was cut at an angle, so it sloped backwards. After this cut, the surface was flattened and the edges were smoothed out a little. When this was compared against the rest of the leg, it allowed the foot to be held further back and gave the impression of it being lifted. A few more trims and comparisons were needed though to ensure that the leg was sitting correctly. Following this, the tab from the underside of the foot was removed and the shape of the claw was re-established. With the parts prepped, both feet were assembled and glued to the legs, completing that running pose. Normally, demon princes wear a loincloth to protect their demonic modesty, but this flowing piece of cloth seemed to be a little out of place for Logan. Fortunately, the rear part of the helmet from one of the demon prince head variants was the perfect size and shape to represent an armoured codpiece. After a little adjustment with a scalpel, the part fit nicely into place, complementing the armoured legs around it and mimicking how power armour looks. Following this, the regular power armour torso piece was attached without any further adjustment. When it came to choosing the head, I settled on one of the Ogroid Therodons. This was for a few reasons. It was correctly scaled, a head from outside the Demon Prince kit would give me more options later on down the line, and the horns helped to fit into that corn aesthetic. There were a few required changes though. Both the beard and hair were clipped back and shaved smooth, as these would be added back shortly. From here, the head was glued together and glued to the torso, where it surprisingly fit pretty well without much modification required. So far, the model just looked like a generic corn demon prince and not a corrupted Logan Grimnar. 
This problem would be resolved by adding his iconic facial hair, but first, the party needed to be prepared. Specifically, a mixture of two parts green stuff to one part millipot. I find that the small amount of millipot helps to add a degree of rigidity to the mix, allowing me to achieve a little more definition while still benefiting from the smooth finish of the green stuff. With the putty mixed, two small blobs were added to the cheeks in order to recreate Logan's iconic mutton chops. Once in place, the blobs were flattened out a little before a metal sculpting tool was used to scour in some hair texture. During this and subsequent steps, I made sure to use some Vaseline across my tools and fingers to prevent the putty from sticking to them. With the hair on the cheeks complete, more pieces were added to the head. Several pieces were steadily built up to increase the volume of the hair. Like with the beard, more lines were added to recreate the more individual strands of hair. To further this detail, thin pieces of putty were rolled out, laid across the hair, and gently blended in. This allowed the hair to look more like actual hair, rather than just a solid blob of vaguely hair-shaped matter. As these pieces were rolled out, the hair was carefully directed towards Logan's left side, which would help to blend it in naturally to the model's movement. Finally, a couple of narrow strands were rolled out and twisted together to create this almost braided pattern. This piece was cut in half and attached to the Demon Prince's upper lip, completing the iconic facial hair and better linking this model to his original. While the putty cured, work could begin on the arms. The left arm with the integrated gun was built and attached to the torso, along with the unarmored right arm, which was assembled holding the axe. While the axe wasn't quite Morkai, this was intentional. Morkai was taken from a Chaos Warrior and reforged. While this could have happened in this alternative universe, the reforging process would have been unlikely. While the model was close to completion, there wasn't yet much in the way of Space Wolf detailing. This would be partly resolved by taking the pelt from the Wolf God Terminators and clipping away the leg and the head. The outside edges were cleaned up and the insides of the pelts were both trimmed down to allow the pelts to sit better against the shoulder. After several rounds of adjustment, both parts of the pelt were glued to the model. But the wolfy details weren't done just yet. After gluing the regular Demon Prince skulls to the waist, another fur pelt was added. This was taken from Logan Grimnar's chariot, which helped to tie this new incarnation to his original. Again, the pelt was filed, trimmed, and adjusted until it could be placed and glued against the waist. For this particular build, the long whipping tail didn't seem like a good fit, so this was omitted. However, this choice then required a Wolf God Terminator tilt shield to be used to cover up the tail hole. In addition to this, a small trinket that was taken from the Wolfen kit and glued to the shoulder pad. And finally, the wings, which completed the build. For the base, I returned to the old favorite, cork floor tiles. These were torn up and glued across the base to create a rough, rocky outcrop. With the larger chunks in place, smaller pre-cut chunks of cork were then used to fill in a few gaps and add a little extra texture. While the glue was drying, a few citadel skulls were clipped away and cleaned up. These were glued across the base, once again feeding into that corn aspect of the model. To fill in a few of the more emptier spots on the base, some of AK Interactive texture paste was added. While the color of the paste you use doesn't really matter here, as it will be painted over, applying the paste quite thickly and in an uneven manner will ensure a more realistic looking ground texture. After opting to not use the rock in the build, I was left with the problem of having a pretty small contact point in which to attach the Demon Prince to its base. Fortunately, there was always that trusty fallback, pinning. A 1mm diameter hole was drilled into the base of the right foot before having some 1mm steel wire glued into it. The wire was then clipped down until just a few millimeters protruded. This wire was then compared against the base and the small mark left behind would indicate where the second hole needed to be drilled. This hole was drilled through the cork and through the base beneath it. The wire in the foot was then secured into the hole with more super glue, ensuring that the model had a secure bond. Now, when it came to painting this model, I pretty much used the exact same steps that I'd used in my Corn Corrupted Lehman Russ video. 
So rather than repeating everything word for word here, I would recommend checking out that video if you're not only interested in how I built him, but also how I painted both of these models. The only real divergence from the Russ video was how I painted Logan's hair. I began with Wizard Grey and then highlighted up through Cockharadon Grey with some final points of White Star to finish things off. From there, the rock and snow effects were repeated across the base and everything was given a coat of matte varnish, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Logan Grimnar Demon Prince of Corn. As always, I had a lot of fun taking a character that is normally a loyalist and twisting them towards the ruinous powers. Now for this first of hopefully eight Demon Princes that I plan to build, Logan Grimnar was a good starting point. He's a little more generic than other characters such as Narl Stormcaller or Arjak Rockfist, which served as a good proof of concept and jumping off point for building eight unique Demon Princes. After building and painting up this guy, I'm really excited to start on the next character, and I'd love to hear your suggestions for some well-known Space Wolf characters and how different they could have been under the corrupting influence of Korn. Now, whether or not you decide to build this particular model yourself, hopefully you manage to pick up something that you found useful for your own projects. But if you would like to recreate this model, then you can find all the parts and paints I used to build it linked in the description below. And don't forget to check out my previous Demon Russ video to see how I painted this guy. But before I go, I just want to say give my thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members who helped to keep this channel going. Especially my Pouch of Dead Animal Bits and Above supporters, who are Jonathan Hart, Maciej Savitsky, Morgan, Ryan Little, Swedsman, Tim, Axel Jonsson, Daniel Dowling, Immaterial Creations, Johans, Jonathan Sandsteed, Mr. Grimm, Pale Juice, and the Googles. And my Sergeant Level channel members, who are Dave, John Gibbs, The Sire Acquired, Whale Tussler, Mr. Jared Hess 95, Lunington Paints, Mark Taylor, and Philip Poya. If you're interested in supporting me, you can hit the join button below or find a link to my Patreon in the description. Supporters get a whole host of benefits, including ad-free access to my videos, sneak peeks, a private Discord channel, and exclusive merchandise. Speaking of merchandise, I also have a few t-shirts and mugs up for sale featuring designs drawn by me. You can check those out by following the links below or by going over to PeteTheWarGamer.com. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.